same sa the same Santa Maria is associated to life and death. See, but that that sun doesn't die. It just goes change. below, journey, yeah. journeys journey below, and mm -hmm. reborn, reborn mm -hmm. by the east again. Just like humans, mm -hmm. I believe that we do the same thing. Okay, guys. So, just take some pictures. What have what have you seen? <laughs> take your pictures right. now or ever. Madness, mate. Madness. Chichen Itza. Okay. <laughs> this is um, an observed, mate. The Mayans are actually mental, mate. They knew when the longest day of the year was, and they knew when the shortest day of the year was, because of this observatory here, the way that the light goes through the holes in it. They knew from that when the longest and shortest day of the year was. And they also knew that Venus was a planet. They knew it was a planet like 500 years before everyone else did. But you think, they built all this, yeah? They built all this without metal and without the wheel. Can you imagine? How have they managed that? How have they pulled that out of the bag? I'm telling you this now. They were heavy trippers. All these ancient civilizations, I would bet my money on it that they were tripping on psychedelics. Look at that. They knew so much about the stars way before we did. And, and, we, and they didn't have any of the technology that we have today. So they should, places like this are just bonkers, man. This is, this is why I love Central and South America. It's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely mental. And there's much more of this to come, like the, the South, Central America, Peru, Machu Picchu, man. There's many, much more of this to come. But the sites like this are fucking fascinating. Uh, the snake. The Mayans associate the snake with the symbol of the early water before the rain got existed. Uh, but this Mayan god in here was trapped. But in other lands, that rain god was the snake. So in the 900s, when Chichen Itza was left abandoned, and then the Mayans returned to home, uh, as I said, we don't know in which terms they deal that problem. You know, and like, okay, maybe I imagine that somebody says, well, I came and nobody was here, and I fixed all the temples, and I use them, them now, and somebody, all of them are safe. But this is my place, I just left it, but I come back, now you have to go. The others might say, no, I don't go. <laughs> no? So it seems like this culture that I write, named as the Toltecs, brought this different God. And the Totecs came from central Mexico. The Mayas are here in central Mexico, to more than 1,000 kilometers away from this point. So these people start using or reusing the older structures and build new ones on their own style. So one of the earlier structures that belong to this new culture who arrived is this one. How we know? Because we see that very famous god that was worshipped at Teotihuacan by Aztecs, and by, by, by the time with the, by the Maya, the snake. The snake, get a little close, let's see the face. I want you to observe this. The snake, that the Mayas uh, changed the name. These people who arrived, they got this figure and they named it Quetzal. Coatl. Coatl means snake in the language of central Mexico. And Quetzal is a bird with green feathers. Quetzal to the ancient central Mexicans meant the heavens. And Coatl meant the earth. So Kukulkan meant above and below the heaven and the earth. Associating them both in one symbol, the snake with feathers as naming it Quetzalcoatl. So when these Toltecs came here, they built this temple, and we know that because this figure, the snake, the snake over there with feathers. Now, I want you to observe this. It has circles in the center. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that Ricardo mentioned to you about one famous stone? Do you remember that? It is thought that the circles contain figures of that stone because the Mayas and Aztecs and Toltecs associate to very precious stone. Today is used in medicine, by the way. You know, those shamans use them 
to absorb or absorb the bad, the bad energy and convert it into opposite. Amigos, why we say that? Mm -hmm. Because there's a place called in Central Mexico called Teotihuacan. And in Teotihuacan, in Teotihuacan there is still a figure, a Quetzalpapalotl, with the eyes of obsidian. From that, the archaeologists believe that these empty spaces contain figures. Who could be three? Could be either a turquoise, a jade, or, a, or, a, or obsidian, perhaps. Now, get a little close to me. I'm going to show you another picture. Why they believe these stones? Amigos, because these stones to the ancient people of America were like gold or like diamonds. You see, ancient Americans didn't really, in this land, there's no gold, starting with that. Silver is from Central Mexico. Gold from Central Mexico. But still, it was not so famous and so adored like Spanish times. Why the Mayas use this stone they associated to? They associated below protection of God Shivalba, the heaven blue and the earth green. So I want to show you something. So the ancient upper society in the Mayan times and the Toltecs as well, and the uh, not the not the Aztecs, they were distinguished in a very easy way. How you guys will distinguish somebody important with no somebody important today? Maybe today the media, no? Or the social, you know, uh, webs. But how the Mayas got to know they were important back in the past? I want you to observe something. The ancient Mayas, amigos, flattened their foreheads. They place wooden boards on their heads and they make it like conical or pointed. So I want you to observe the profile of a ruler. Observe the profile. Okay, now look this. Look at this. Whoa, that is crazy. Now, for that reason, many people will say, ah, maybe the Mayans get the knowledge because they got the, the aliens information. Well, let me show you this. Look at this royalty couple. See this guy? See the lady. So as much as men and women put those boards when the baby was born, we are figuring that out, no? That information was also written by the Spaniards, still was in use when the Spaniards came, and they heard among, among the, um, the Spaniards, they wrote it down. In the Spanish books that we got information, they say, when babies born, their small heads are compressed between wooden boards, and after three months or four, they got already, you know, that physical deformation. But that physical deformation to us, to them, was beauty. It was a, a distinction, you know, of societies. Now, let me show you this. Look, and what I'm saying you this, because not only the head, the teeth using that precious gems that I'm telling you about. Now, take a look of this. I want you to, to watch this. This I'm gonna show you is a picture. It's a picture from 1999. Okay? Take a look at the baby. 1999. Can you see that? Now let me show you this. Okay, you already saw that now. Now wait a minute. One minute. One Mexican minute. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> a Mexican minute is a lot longer than one normal minute. <laughs> well, okay, then, then then let's call it, how we call it? Um, American minute, Mexican minute. An English minute. Language, okay. Look, look. Um, the National Museum of Anthropology, they have a magazine published monthly where they can Look at this. Uh -huh. what the? And there is just two. There are many shapes. So this is the one that is shape of the head I show you when the guys when they were real. You know how they looked. This is in the 1600s, 900s, 1000s. Now I want you to observe. Look at this. Their teeth. They make it shorter, and they give them different shapes and forms. But incrustations of to uh, obsidians, jade, turquoise. 
jade and turquoise is an obsidian where the three colors associate you know to, to these three levels of the world below the center and above miklan the place where the dead go and life begins the place of humans and the place of god you see this is what i'm telling you that it's very possible to many archaeologists that either one of these three stones might be located on those circles that no longer you see anything at all because the circle is gonna be meaning something it's not just because they make a circle for nothing as i said the proofs are being found in many other places unfortunately tulum was has been how can i say destroyed on purpose <laughs> by economical reasons mm -hmm. okay let me tell you that chichen itza was bought by one american guy oh really yes this man how much did he buy vice council mm -hmm. few american dollars there was no law protecting national monuments so this man had heard the story now but before he was in the revolution times. He was in the in the days of war between you know social problems here. So they took advantage. At the same time, they were really good archaeologists. They were defending, you know, these places being looted openly with the uh, agreement of authorities as well. The property was sold to somebody. And that somebody was not an archaeologist. He came at this point. He make a hole on the top. He make it all the way down. He found a burial in there. You know, he named it the tomb of the great ruler. It's the name he gave it. But to be honest with you, we don't believe it really belong to a great ruler's tomb. Because the artifacts found don't belong to the what a royalty great person ruler. might give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So new artifacts. But he named it that way. And he also mentioned he found her pearls in there. Mm. What he found every time he somebody asked them the marketing. <laughs> he did. He did sell them in the black market, you know? And to people to Karen is in Washington was and Peabody Museum were involved. They were paying. They were paying him to to, to do these, you know, and send them the things to their countries. And they were sold to private collectors and all that. Unfortunately, when finally they stopped them, it was too late because they've been working in the cenote and loot the cenote with a machine brought, which is right by the toilet. That machine was used to get all, all artifacts from the cenote. Many things of jade, turquoise, obsidian, rubber balls and balls and were found in the cenote. Skeletons as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the tomb of the great ruler. Everything has a price. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know what? What well, ice might be a pyramid, but it's not. This is the one Ricardo was mentioning to you that is a calendar. Amigos, it's been explored. But I want to show you, got an idea how it was originally found. In 1843, the first Americans arrived at this place. It was thanks to the promotion, you know, of them. They started writing what they saw, that these people uh, practically gave uh, to the world known about Chichen Itza. In 1843, after the Spaniards had arrived, remember, and they just stayed some time and they left, this is a calendar, yeah, so each it has four stairways and each is 91 days for the seasons and for, for the amount of days in a year, mate. And underneath it is a cenote, like here, like an like a underwater cave where they found skeletons and shit. Bro, the Mayans were actually mad, mad like, this is so sick, like, I respect this so much. It's here, it's in Central America, in Guatemala. Do they remember, once upon a time it was just the Mayan territory. So they take Eight of these platforms have three rectangles. Eight times three makes 24. But the one on the top has only two sunken rectangles so, or squares. If you sum them up together, there are 26. And 26 on the other makes 52. Now, come this way. Let me show you the snake. So listen, so March 12th, you imagine these amigos that in the Mayan time that you were here and your priest tells you that he's calling the sun, the Kukulkan, their God, is going to show up in here. It's like I'm telling you that we're going to see in then what we will live right here, you know? Okay. 
First of all, I want you to observe how the Mayas managed to form the body of the snake. Observe the first platform. In between the first one and the second one, at the back, there is a triangle, observe. Can you see it? There's a triangle, observe, at the back. Yes. Between mm -hmm. the second and the third, at the back, there is a part of the stair visible. Can yeah. you see it? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now observe the bottom, the head of the snake, right mm -hmm. at the bottom. At the bottom, right there, the head of the snake. Then, see, triangle, 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 triangle. You only see the triangles. But on that day, listen what we see. Guys, 3.30 in the afternoon, half of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. This is the west side. The sun lights up. This whole facade, but from this corner that way, it's in the shadows, just like this. 3.30, you see the sun forming, mm -hmm. one triangle. So light up from top. As the sun keeps going by the west, starts forming, lighting up, the triangles, one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. seven. And, head. and finally, mm -hmm. the head is light up by the sun, forming, looks like, looks like a slithering mm -hmm. serpent that descends. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let me show you a picture. An older picture, take a look. The first, the first picture I saw about the place. Take a look. Can you see? The triangles in here are connecting each other. Take a look. Can you see the body of the snake? Yeah. So you imagine that it's all this place, amigos, is covered by hundreds of people. Let me remind you, there are remains that the whole this area was totally surrounded by a wall. So this area become the most important religious area. The, the important things happening here. So remember, none of this was used like, ah, the residents, no, no. The, the ruler, he was not, he was a smart guy. Can you imagine a ruler climbing those steps? He would have been crazy, no? Climbing those steps, no. This was only a century, a temple. That was all. Amigos, this is exactly what we see. But remember, the idea here is how the Mayas capture the sun, the direction, the position, the elevation, what this should be. Because let me remind you something. This plaza where we stand in, it's artificial. Yes. It's filled. It used to be hollow. It's filled. They make it to this level precisely to make what you just saw possible. That's what I'm telling you guys, and many people say, oh, how they did it. Amigos, I think one of the big losses, not only of Mexicans or Mayas, it's a human, you know, it's to disappear the documents where all that information gathered. You know, this is perhaps a loss, but we don't know how, you know, people figure it out, but. To be honest, nobody knows exactly how they get the steps, how they figure out, they observe, or, or how, how this, you know? It's like today, people who build hotels, they orient them to the wind, you know? It's the same thing, you know, they had, oh, in this time, the wind comes this way. In this time, the, the wind comes that way. Let's play, look for a point where the, the, this uh, building is gonna be, where this, if there's a hurricane, it won't be blowing wind on this direction. You know, it's the same. So the Mayas find the way in their day. Now, let's do the clapping thing, okay? And then we go to see the ball game. Yes, okay. let's see the ball and game. See, What's this here? here? What's this? That was that is called the Temple of the Warriors. Yeah. And uh, as I, every temple that you see, my friends, I want you to... It's to a god, to, to a god or to a certain... Uh -huh. uh, yeah. But uh, but two different, two, two different, no? That one was uh, has a chakmol. A chakmol is like an idol sitting like this. Yeah. And um, seems like they do offerings on it. Probably some people say it's hard, there's no evidence of that, unfortunately. But if they ever sacrifice what happened, it happens in there. You I know? thought they sacrificed them on here, on this one here. No. No, not no. this one. No, 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 not, we don't believe so. But no. I thought that's what the stairs were for, so once they killed them, they would throw them off the no, stairs. No, 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 no. That is uh, some, some uh, uh, stories people who make up about, okay. you know, something like that, you know. Fair they enough. said the thing about they asked the same thing that they rolled down the stairs. No, I yeah. mean, Spanish version. They say that 100,000 people were killing one day. You imagine killing 100,000 people one day? Nah, it's not possible. I mean, many of the things people, you know. So let's do the, the um, exercise. Now let's gather here, please. Let's gather. Got group, please. We got the yeah. guard around here. The one that Ricardo was telling you. So get close. Get close. Get close. Find us my brother. I want you to observe this. 
Dale este. Se me baja que está bien grandote. Ah. ¿Quién? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Remember that we gotta put our things, okay? I said mine comes down because it's too big. <laughs> okay. Okay. Remember I was telling you about the entrance? That was the original entrance. That one with the wooden uh, door. So they removed the rocks and they found the the tunnel. The tunnel was not just open; it was all totally uh, full of rocks, you know, and, and dirt. But they have to do the work. Many years took, you know, to to remove them since the beginning all the way to the top. But for that reason, the temple was preserved, you know, because I mean, nobody was nobody got in there after it was abandoned. Nobody till these archaeologists came in the 1800s. It is then when people, you know, start finding things. Still today, people keep, keep finding things. Now, our exercise. Come on, chicken. Hi. So two snakes that we don't realize. And right above the center on top square, there is a figure of the rain god. His nose is gone. You see it? Yeah. In the middle. In the middle. In the middle, right in the middle. Yeah. Now, we're going to do the exercise. Get close to me. Get close to me. Listen, listen. Listen. Oh, it sounds just like a bird. Yeah. Now we're gonna do it, okay? So empty your hands. We're gonna do it. So the exercise goes like this. We're gonna do it a little different so you are really feeling the acoustic. Listen. Your hands go this way. Like, not like this. Like hollow. You go like this. Look, look. Now, okay, they were good. Now you wanna do it? Do it? <laughs> okay. You have to do it in unison at the same time. You can do it in different ways, but still the sun comes. Listen. Now, you move from this angle there, you don't hear the acoustic. Put your cover because this guy is coming again. Next to our right. Come this way. Come. <laughs> Fucking crazy, mate. Don't tell me that ain't mad as, mate. Are you mad? They, it sounds like a bird, a certain type of bird. They've managed to build it so that when you clap in a certain place, it sounds like a certain bird. We couldn't do that today. Mental. Mask business. Okay. Take your pictures, please. I think this is the... Gang business. I went out last night, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm running on two hours sleep here. Wow. Look at this. This is the ball game court where they used to play a ball. You're leaving the energy little by little behind? Muchachos. Eh. The game or the ball game that you see here is very different from the ones that were built all through, you know, the country, across the country, east, west, north, south, Central America. Uh, the ball he, uh, game here took a different, uh, a different twist, different change. Before the 10 hundreds, the ball courts were like this, parallel walls like this, uh, uh, walls like this, slanted walls like this, mm. huh? like this. So people could stand on the wall and pass a ball through a circle which was like embedded in this way. So they could kick the ball. I got a picture to show you so you got a better idea. Because you know something? In some regions of Chiapas, the game is still is, is played. Really? Yeah. See, and I was in Monte Alban and their, Monte their, Alban. Their, their game their game place has like slopes on the side with steps. I, but here I, it's just flat walls. I know that one. I look at what I found, the picture I wanted to show you. <laughs> But no, this is another one I want to show you now. I want to show you something different. Amigos, listen. Uh, the carvings we're gonna see are so clear. They just clean the spot from all that grew on it. So now it's really nice to see. But I want to show you something. How the game was played, all right? Uh-huh, look at this. Still, this is something alive. Still people, people plays the ball, kicks the ball, with a hip but in this kind of uh, of uh, walls 
it's impossible that they kick the ball this way and, and pass it through there. Yeah. The carving that I'm going to show you telling us that the game was played a different way. This system that I just showed you is from the 10, 10 years, 900 back. Okay, perhaps the old part of Chichen Itza, there's a ball game found, but nothing like this. Wait, so they had to kick the ball through that ring there? Right. They had to oh. Now, how this was possible to pass the ball with this? No. Seems like the people use a stick, they run through the field, oh, okay. they use a stick and they use a paddle to kick the ball with. So let me show the card. You know, the room is so beautiful because they're so clear. You really see a lot of yeah. information in it. There's players. I want you to observe. And, and, and how all these researchers, you know, have to come out with the conclusion that they kick the ball with something. Take a look. This is the guy standing. I want you to observe the hand. He's holding something on the hand. Take a look at that thing. Yes, yes. You see it? I want you to observe that that thing is also, all players have that thing on the hand, like a board. And they got a belt, they got a stick coming from, from the scent, from, from, from the waist. Can you see? They use like something here, like, like a protector. All of them, take a look, take a look. Now, come a little bit this way. Let me show you something. They also kick the ball. I want you to observe that if they got a boot in one leg and they got a sandal on the other leg. Uh -huh. See, so one the foot, oh, they, got, they yeah. have a boot in one yeah, yeah. feet and they got a sandal on the other. Now observe, all players the same, take a look. See, the boot and the sandal, take a look. The boot and the sandal, all players have like a sandal, like, like a boot. Some flower they kick it with. Now, get a little close. Yeah, wait a minute. Get a little close. This is perhaps a better, you know, visible one. You see that thing on the hand? Observe the hand. It's like a block. It's like. Right. But what's the what's the what's the lines coming off of it here? Probably feathers. Feathers off the block. Probably feathers or blood. Now. Right, okay. They got a shoe in the sandal. And now, listen. They got a captain. Each team has a captain. Now, get close. I'm going to show you the two captains facing each other. The captain of this team, from this way, that way, is this guy. This guy. There are seven people on this carving, and there's a circle on the bottom. The circle represents the ball. It was a rubber ball, and this is call in there. This, uh, this call is, is the symbol of life and death at the same time. And we Mexicans interpret the, the death. It's not really the physical they remember. It's just like transition to life. Okay, but take a look. The captain is holding a blade on the hand. Instead of a racket like the others, he has a blade and he has a head on the other hand. So on the other hand, he has a blade, a head. You see? The head of that guy. What is the body? Right here. This is the head of the captain. This team. Take a look. This body has no head. No head. His knee on the floor and headless. Oh, from the head, yeah. from the head, there are serpents coming out. Now, if you really don't distinguish that one, let me show you here. Come a little bit this way. Because we got the other. There are headless body seven there. people in each team. Now take a look. This guy on his knee. On his knee. He's that one. And take a look what is coming from the head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven snakes. Remember how many triangles the sun forms over there? Seven. Number five. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, huh? let me show you the other. From this way. Six. The circle I show you in the center. Come on. Is this one? It's a circle. It's a ball with a skull. You see? And this guy I show you with a blade on the hand. And on this side. All right. And this guy also has serpents on the head. You see this man? Carvings there and carvings here showing us the same thing. Now, what does it represent? It represents that somebody cut their head off. Somebody cut the head off and he's holding the head of the loser or winner. Now, this is the hard thing to really to find out. Is he a winner or is he a loser? 
the one who wins uh, loses the life or is the one who loses who loses the life? What do you think? Well, you would assume that it's the loser, but I'm guessing it's the other way around. Okay, come on. Number one. Oh, you need, you need this. Let's go both sides. <clears throat> if the game, not all the time, the game uh, involves a ritual. No, don't you believe that these guys, every time they face each other, somebody got killed? No. The game was a game, but also took um, a ritual matter. From time to time, it took, you know, more than just a game. And, uh, however, this guy on his, on his knee, that is no head on him, is telling us that he's not physically dead. Because if you're dead, you wouldn't be like, like that, you know? If you were dead, you would be just flat on the ground. People represent death, normally in Mesoamerica, with somebody with a closed eye or a or cross on the eye. He was dead. But uh, that, that is only telling us a ritual. The uh, symbolic representation of the seven snakes is the same, exactly the same meaning as we see the triangles being formed over there. And the big private, there are seven triangles. Seven, amigos, is the number that the Mayas associate to life of fertility. While number seven is life and fertility, number nine is below and the word and 13, 13 is the same. Uh -huh. So, mis amigos, you play lottery, break them. Now, observe <laughs> how many stones are missing. As I said, people are curious, can I just figure out what it was in there and put the stone? No, they just don't exist. What you see is real. So, no tea business. I forgot what it's called actually. Ake Kin or something like that. Ake Kin, something like that. Wet and look at that sexy lifeguard business. Oh, yes. Hey, why is it saying it? Oh, fuck it, who cares? seven minutes left on of time on the mic on the SD card so I better get swimming with the fishies it makes it sick <laughs> Do not tell me Mexico is not a oh there's a fish! There's another fish. There's a few. Oh my balls. Oh, oh, oh. Mate, there's fish everywhere and they're like they're not the kind of fish I've ever seen before. They're like baby sharks. And this can go underwater as well, mate. How long have I got left? I've got six minutes, right. Better make it quick. Oh. Nah. No smoking. Oh, that just ruins it, mate. Living my life, yeah, yeah. This is pretty incredible. <laughs> as far as things go, today's been a good day. Blessed, utterly blessed. Do you know how deep this thing is? Like, you could, it looks black because you literally just can't. It's like something daft. It's like 50 meters deep or something. It's, it's something crazy. 50 meters. Green goes. 
cook for you. No, 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 it's okay. It's good. That's how it does it, so you can just play it in like that. Yeah. But is the jump? No, 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 no. It's fine, it's fine. We're going for the jump. Going for that jump. Are you ready? Da -na 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 -na. Now drank cenote water. I'm gonna live forever. But in reality, let's think about it. You know what? It's funny, yeah. People, people act like they're gonna live forever. Like you've just got unlimited time to do everything in the world that you want. But you don't. You could die next week. So live your life to the limits. And if you die, you'll be like, you know what? I died, but I did some cool shit. I didn't even bring the swimming trunks here, mate. See these? See them shorts? I don't have to wear them on the bus back. And like, I'm gonna have to wear them for like two and a half hours wet. But do I care? No. Because I'm swimming here. I'm blessed. Live your life. Quit your job. If you don't like your job, don't work it. If you don't like your city, leave it. If you don't like your life, live it. So that's, 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 that's my philosophy. The Bosnian Gandhi is coming in hot today with fire. Oh, it's a bit bright. Look, I'm ascending. I'm going to heaven. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not even here with anyone, and I don't give a fuck. I'm having a fucking class time. Check these out, mate. That's some tropical business. Look at that, man. I'm waiting for Tarzan to come down swinging. Oh, they got three minutes and 40 left. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear me on this because there's probably water in the microphone. So, we'll, but we'll see. We'll see. What can you see under the water? I love GoPros. I actually do. If you go travelling, buy a GoPro, man. Forget that big fucking large camera. Get a shout out GoPro. Sponsor me. This GoPro with 300 bar. I want my money back because I shouted you out. La la la, na 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 la la. Oh yes, oh yes. I look like a turtle. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> sorry mate, I'm having time of my life. How you doing? This is amazing, It's yeah. good, isn't it, mate? This is cool. It's crazy, huh? We were in uh, one of these also in uh, Puerto Rico. Oh yeah? They have a bunch of these too, bro. Swear it's down, is it good? Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah. So nice, isn't it? Perfect. Like, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Good day today. Today's been a good day. Yeah. We've got two and a half minutes left on the cam. We're going swimming. I might fart just to leave a little bit of gas here for you. Imagine what animals live down there, like no one really knows. Oh, by the way, the fish, I asked the man, the fish are catfish. So they're not little sharks, they are catfish. There's plenty of them on Tinder. Oh, that's the money shot. Yes, boy. <laughs> What's going on? I'm by myself in Mexico, in a sonority. Keep floating, man. living it good, mate. Live. So yeah, the 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 tour was third, like 29 quid, 28 quid. You got Chichen Itza, this Sonota in Valladolid or Valladolid. We had to pay the entry in Chichen Itza, which is like 600 pesos, which is like 30 quid, which is expensive, mate. It's expensive to say that you can just sneak in if you want to, but it's just getting there and all that. I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy the tour. So here I am, just just. I might put this on my Instagram, it's only four minutes long. You gotta do what you gotta do, boys. Oh, yeah, last night I went out as well, mate. I'm only on two hours sleep, mush. Two hours sleep. It was a good night last night. <laughs> Definitely worth it. Are we going under one last time? <clears throat> Oh, mate, I can't even see how it's just blinded. 
you know what's funny yeah there's thousands there's, I think there's thousands I'd say hundreds of these in Mexico a lot of them have never been explored and some of them had like a when they first discovered them they had like skeletons in it because the Mayans that when they sacrificed people they would leave their body in the in the cenotes so at the bottom of here they're very well well probably not this one but they could be skeletons find oh, that sick mate but yeah in terms of my next steps I'm going to head south towards Tulum and then from Tulum go back north around to Mer yeah you know what I mean? It is what it is. We'll see what the crack is. I mean, I'm in no rush really to go anywhere or do anything. Yeah, I, I, I met a guy travelling and uh, he said he said a cool quote. He said, um, he said, uh, people don't ask me how I am anymore because they already know. I like that quote. It's cool. But um, yeah, and people always say, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And, it, and the answer is the same. Whatever the fuck I want, you know. If I want to go and do some day trips and tours, which is what you want to do, you want to do experiences. I can do them. If I don't want to do them, I can sit in bed all day and just do an alt, but that's pretty boring. But yeah. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Chichen Itza and the Cenote. Uh, yeah, I'm an underrated legend. Simple as that. And I hope you all are at home watching this on your TV, sparking up a big doobie.